friends, welcome back to another Claire Hochul video. Today I am out here at the beautiful Rams Hill Golf Course. I am here for a tournament, but I have a very special treat for you guys, something I don't normally do, but I will be getting into a bit more, some instructional content. I have two amazing professional golfers here, Hannah Gregg and Friedrich Lindblom. That was great. <laughs> a little bit Russian. Exactly, right? yeah. <laughs> Fred and Hannah, they are both amazing players, and Fred is kind of a chipping and pitching guru. guru. Yeah. He was hitting some incredible mega flops yesterday and just like all these nice little nippy chips around the course, and I was like, okay, you're gonna need to teach me how to do that. So he's gonna do kind of a chipping basics video, and also bonus, teach me how to do the mega flop. Let's do it, let's get into it. So why don't you start just hitting a few shots and let me see how it looks. I saw some pretty good shots yesterday, so we're not too far off. Yeah, I don't have a terrible short game, but it could definitely be improved. Bruh. Oops. <laughs> well, we can work on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I noticed yesterday is that, for me, it looks like the ball is coming out a little bit too hot. If you look at really good wedge players, it almost looks like the ball is leaving the club facing slow motion almost. Mm. The ball flight is slower, a little bit higher and spinnier. Okay. If you look at people that really struggle, you see them kind of set up to the ball with the ball back, hands forward, right? And the ball comes out low and rolls out forever. You can ensure to hit the ball solid with that type of setup and technique, but a shot like this where you have to kind of stop it quicker and hit a little bit higher, it's gonna be very difficult. Right. So I think you have kind of the basic shot if you have a lot of greens to work with, you have that sorted. But if we're gonna improve just kind of the high soft the shot that launch a little bit higher and land, <laughs> that was really soft. So launch a little bit higher and land a little bit softer. Let's see if I can do it again. Something like that. You see how the ball kind of comes out slow? Right, yeah. I want to achieve that. And when you swing the club back, the club face is just a little bit too shot right. to be able to get some loft that impact. If you look at really good wedge players when they hit this type of shot, they have the toe of the club pointing a little bit more up, mm -hmm. which will add loft yeah. to the club face and get the ball to launch a little bit higher. Right. The way you do that is kind of like using your lead wrist. We call it moving more into extension, which is a more cupped feel. Okay, so like this? Exactly. So the, like this. Exactly. So the logo of the glove, I want you to point more point up. So yeah, set up to the ball. The okay. Yeah, 100%. Gotcha. Exactly, right? So when you swing back, you have that logo pointing, I'm exaggerating, but a little bit more that way. Okay, yeah. And then in the downswing, you feel like you almost maintain that angle while you release it so you can maintain the loft of the club. We picked a tough spot here in a little, almost a little muddy area into yeah. the grain. It's gonna help you expose the bounce too, right? Because yes. the more open the club is, is and you release it, the more you use the bounce and not the leading edge that Got digs. Got it, yeah. So when I get shut here, that leading edge is gonna probably dig a lot more than if I get it open and exposed and I can just use the bounce. You're a guru already. <laughs> All right, so try that feel. So you can you kind of stop halfway back first. Just make sure that toe is more there. Nice. Uh -huh. And then go ahead and release it from that position. Ooh. Beautiful. Oh yeah, lots more height and, and you spin. You see it stops straight away. Tons more height yeah. and spin. Like this. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's so much easier. Oh, that's, that's fun. I got a little tool here. It's a wrist sensor called Hack Motion. Ooh. And it got something called biofeedback. It's literally gonna make a sound and you're gonna try to maintain that sound. So if you change the angle of the wrist, the sound is gonna disappear. Oh, so it's okay. a really good way to kind of coach yourself and it's cool. So we're gonna include it in the video. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so we've just calibrated this and now I have an avatar of my wrist and you can see what it's doing. That's crazy. It's cool, right? So as long as Claire maintains some angle in the wrist this way, you will hear the sound. If she goes into the flexion, Sound goes away. Nothing. So she has to maintain the sound to be able to maintain loft in the clapping. We wanna is hear it? the angels singing. There? And they're good. They did it wrong one time. There you go. Gone, right? Yeah. Hit a good one here. Make sure you hear the sound the whole time. Beautiful. A little long. Do it again. A little long. You were 30 degrees. So it's good. 30 degrees is obviously cupping. We wanted to avoid that way, right? So you're pretty good there, yeah. Should I do more? Right now we want to air it for too much, right? Okay. You like this. There you go. For this high soft shot. Beautiful. Super high yeah. <laughs> That's true. The, the more you do it, the higher it goes, yeah, right? Because the yeah. more loft you put on the club face. Yeah. Okay, so go somewhere in between here because we don't really need a high flop to this pin. We just need a high soft one you hit before. Right. 
I almost shanked Lord. that. <laughs> you felt like you almost shanked it I to almost three feet. It. <laughs> I like hit it really close to the and, heel. And that is, that is good though, because now you have more margins for error because the loft is up and the bounce right. is exposed. Right. So it doesn't matter. You can literally hit it kind of far behind the golf ball if you use the bounce, the club is just gonna slide right. under the ball. Right. But if you use that leading edge, yeah. you're not gonna get to the ball. Yeah. It's more penalizing when you have that leading edge exposed yep. versus here. You could kind of hit anywhere in like a three inch range yeah, on the ground and the bounce will just allow it to slide under. So a couple of checkpoints I used and you guys can use at home. In the backswing, when the club is parallel to the ground, we want first of all that the hands are directly above the toe line. We mm -hmm. don't want the hands to be too far out here or what well, many people do too far in. So we want it to be directly above the toe line and we want the club head to be in line with the hands. This keeps the club on plane. We don't want the club too far right. outside here right. or too right. far inside. Yeah. And the last thing, we want that toe to point up for the stock yeah. kind of higher shot. We don't want that club face to be too shut. Right. See what happened to the wrist, right? Yeah. Or overly open. I never right. really seen anyone to open. Right, yeah. yeah. So if you can get those three checkpoints, hands above toe line, club face in line with the hands, and then the toe of the club pointing up, mm -hmm. you're going to be in a really good position from there. Sweet. Okay, right. I'm gonna do one more and one then more. teach us the mega flop. Okay, let's do cool. it. Alright. See how much spin that had? Yeah, a lot more spin. Alright, let's do the flop. We moved position here for hitting a really high, sometimes unnecessary, but very fun flop shot. <laughs> yes. So this is the extreme version. So a couple of things that we need here. We need to create maximum loft on the club face heading. So we definitely have to set up, first of all, with a wide open club face. Right? Then the ball needs to be up in the stance, which will also allow us to create more loft and get the club back with less shaft lean. If we have shaft lean, that will de-loft the club face. So we wanna make sure that we almost hit this ball with the hands behind the golf ball. So it sounds a little scary, but yeah, that's yeah. the only way to get hit it really high. There are different ways you can hit the mega flop. One way is to get the hands super low and get really wide. Like this? Yes. Yeah. That's kind of the normal way of, that everyone has been taught doing it. Yeah. But the issue is that that exposed the heel of the club, right. which is so sharp, the heel is literally designed almost to dig. So yeah. what happens is a lot of players been starting doing, you know, set up like this and then they just hit the heel yeah. into the ground and they right. go nowhere. You're gonna That's do that margin for error issue. 100%. So yeah. we're gonna modify this a little bit. So the way I teach the high flop and the way I do it is that I set the club up more on the toe. So if my arm is the ground here, I set it up with a wide open club face but I try to lift the heel slightly off the ground. Uh -huh. okay? Hands a little higher almost. 100%, it has yeah. to be, but right? Not, not down here. Exactly. Slightly <laughs> higher, wide open club face, and then I try to slide the toe underneath the golf uh -huh. ball. Okay, so I'm not even trying to hit this really in the sweet spot or the club face. I kind of try to toe it. And that's gonna also lower the smash factor, which means that you can swing it harder uh -huh. and the ball will go shorter, right. which yeah. is the goal. That's where you see those people take those huge swings and the ball goes a foot. Yeah, really you, low smash factor. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I set up, you see my hands are a little bit higher, the ball position still way forward. I don't have too open of a stance. Okay. But it's okay to swing slightly left and then I try to, imagine if the ball would be teed up, I try to just cut the tee and not hit the ball. So okay. I really try to get underneath it. So then you can hit a full swing and the ball would just go up and stop straight away. Wow. See, yeah. Do you think you can do that? I'm terrified, yeah, but I think I'll, I'll work my way through the scary. <laughs> okay, so we start with the face. Yeah. Wide open. You see how the shaft then want to lean a little bit back. And then we lift the heel slightly. So take your setup from there. It's okay to be a little bit more wristy with this. Add a lot of loft, exactly. So even more angle that we did before. Okay. And really release it as much as okay. you can. Almost try to hit yourself in the face with the golf club. Okay, gotcha. Okay? So just swinging it back toward me versus swinging it over. Let's so, try it. Yeah. See what I can so do. So the heel is slightly off the ground and then you open up the club face even more. Love it. And now you just try to hit that T underneath the ball. <laughs> really good. You you <laughs> scared you got a little, little scared. Yeah. I did. I got yeah. a little scared. It's a car about 200 yards. I don't think you reach it. We have so much loft on the club face and the ball speed is so low so you can hit as hard as you want with that feel now. Look at that. Okay, that was cool. <laughs> okay, now you're not scared. I'm a little less scared. Okay. <laughs> I've been burned one too many times mm. by a poorly executed flop. You're doing everything right. You just need to trust it now and swing it at 100 miles per hour if you can. 
Nice, Claire. Oh, it's a little chunky. But it's good. Yeah. It's really good. I mean, for how I feel like I mishit that, it came out and it's not very penalizing. I just read Alan Chipnuck's book about Phil and he talks about his like monster flop shot. And they measured it in Trackman and his club head speed when he hit it was 103 miles per hour. Wow. Which is faster than you can swing a driver. Yeah. Speed is your friend here. So you have to just get brave. A driver swing with this technique now. All you got. Nice. A little bit more speed there. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. But all those are pretty good shots. Yeah, right? pretty good. One last try. Yeah. See if we can get it real floppy. Nice play. Yeah. That's a pretty I'll good shot. I'll work on it. No, that's I'll a work pretty on good it. Shot. <laughs> well that's done. Super good. That's really fun. I've never tried hitting a flop that way. No? Yeah. No, I've never learned either of these shots. So that was really, really helpful for me. Sweet. Thank you. You guys get to work. Isn't it? Hannah and Fred. Oh, there it is. All right, Fred, that was a really, really good lesson. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm gonna be definitely using those shots on the course. I hope that you guys got something out of it as well and that you will try these new tips for hitting it a little higher and softer and then have a little fun with the mega flop. Maybe put it into play. Absolutely. For fun here it's and there. Supposed to be fun, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So thank you so much for helping us out, for being on the channel. You guys can go check out him and his girlfriend, Hannah, on their Instagrams and they have a YouTube channel as well. We just started a YouTube, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think it's called Hannah. And Frederick. So I'm going to link all of that in the description box below. Go ahead and support them. They're awesome people, awesome golfers, and you'll want to keep up with them on their journey. Again, thank you so much. You got it. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and tap the bell notification to get notified whenever I post. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Bye!